they'll, they'll be attracted to the show not knowing how much science they're going to get by the end. And one way to do that is if I interview celebrities. Everybody loves celebrities. Star Talk evolved not only as a TV show over the last five years, we're entering our fifth season, but its birth was not as a TV show. It started as a terrestrial radio show, uh, enabled by grant money from the National Science Foundation. We said to them, you know, there are people out there who we think like science, but they don't know that they like science. They'll, they'll be attracted to the show not knowing how much science they're going to get by the end. And one way to do that is if I interview celebrities. Everybody loves celebrities. People follow celebrities wherever they go and whatever they do. So if the person I interview is a celebrity, and I talk about ways that science has touched their lives, then you, a fan of that celebrity, get to see science manifesting in ways you might not have known. So my co-host is always a professional stand-up comedian, and the guest is typically an academic. So we have a force of gravity, the academic analysis, and a force of levity, the, the, the comedian. And I, I, I control those knobs to make sure we have a consistently delivered product every single time. This got noticed by the National Geographic Channel. And then it jumped species, and, and it became the first ever talk show based on science to appear on television. That wasn't our intent, our goal, but it turned out that way. And I realized it's because we're, you're coming for the celebrity. And all the talk shows at night feature celebrities. So we were just doing the same thing, except at the end of the day, you learn something. So when you look at the list of guests that we have in any given season, you say, what is the common denominator there? Because we have movie stars and comedians and newscasters, poets, uh, authors, performers. David Crosby on, for example, in a previous season. Just get examples of this. What is the, what do they have in common? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing in common. The, what they have in common is that you've probably heard of them. So even something as simple as scrambling an egg is essentially a scientific manipulation of an ingredient uh, by exposing it to both heat and movement and incorporating air. You're making it behave, an egg behave, in, a, in the desired way. We lead off this season with my interview with Anthony Bourdain, and it's, it's bittersweet. I mean, we get to see a side of him that wouldn't normally be seen or known, because at Star Talk, I like to think of it as sort of a geek safe space. So if you've got some inner geek that doesn't work in other interviews or your fan base won't understand it, uh, you can bring it out in, in that conversation, and we can I can tickle it even more and have it get expressed with that much more um, enthusiasm. And so some of the topics were, do, do you bring science to your approach to food and to the intersection of food and culture? By the way, science is not just astrophysics or physics, it's anthropology, it's, it's um, also uh, what do you do with heat and cold as it's treated, as it treats food and what effect does that have on your taste? So there's the chemistry of taste, all of this. So we touched these topics with him and to see how much thinking he had done about it and how much it has influenced decisions he's made about how he conducted his show and what foods he would taste, how he approached foods. This was just a delight. And then the, the sadness to learn that he would not much longer after that take his own life. I don't know if it was his last interview, but it was I felt privileged that I had even this access to him with not much time before uh, anyone had him uh, in this world. So we lead with that interview, and it's a fun interview. Um, it's a, an insightful and enlightening interview, and uh, I hope people feel it the way I did. Star Talk in total is a show every week, and they all go to our Sirius XM station, uh, uh, it's channel 121, and it's a podcast. 20 of those 50 shows are lifted and jump species and appear on television, the National Geographic Channel. Some of the shows in a year come from Star Talk Live, which is where we go into a theater and I have multiple guests and we have multiple comedians and we take science topics and we just have fun in front of a live audience. And my next Star Talk Live is with James Cameron as a guest. So what motivated you to go to the bottom of the ocean, the bottom of Earth? You know, the funny thing is that I've been asked that a lot, and it occurs to me that a kid would never ask that question because a kid would know you just got to go. We've buried the hatchet. Uh, 
uh, sci-fi uh, fans will might know some of this this backstory. Um, I was very public about the wrong sky that he put over the sinking Titanic. This is a knowable thing. What that sky looked like. There was no moon in the. There was no moon. We know what time of night the Titanic sank. We know where on Earth longitude and latitude. There's only one sky. Rose should have been looking up to on that plank, and it was the wrong sky. In fact, it was a lazy sky. The left side was a mirror reflection of the right sky. I made a big deal of this. Ten years later, and he would finally give in and recut that scene to put in the correct sky. So, to his credit, I mean, he cares about what is real. He's an explorer. He's not just a movie producer. In fact, I know him more as an explorer than as a movie producer, and he's, of course, he's successful at both. So I think we're, we're going to talk about, uh, I mean, it's be up to him. I mean, we're, 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 I'm not going to pre, I, I have some ideas where I want to take the conversation, but that's not going to pre-determine it. If we find a place to wander and it's feeling good, I'm, we're going to wander there. But the fertile grounds for that is that he's an explorer. He likes to tell, he's a storyteller. And he's also an engineer at heart. I look forward to this. And of course, we'll have a stable of comedians and we're just going to have fun.